Hart und Brasse porte le Peie, il se porte la Croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious. Hello, hello, teens all across Ontario and abroad. Welcome back. It is Thursday evening, and we are just so excited to have you joining us yes. for another program. Yeah, yeah. We, we hope that you enjoy the, the program in the morning. Um, I know the Bible discovery with Pastor Daniel Innocent was probably amazing, and so um, we're thankful that you have been tuning in. Um, today, um, it is Thursday, and we want to say Happy Canada Day. But on the same note, we also want to take time to just think about our indigenous community friends. They have been suffering for quite a while now and we just wanna take the time to consider um, what we need to do ourselves to be a part of a change that will make this country a better place. Yeah, um, but before we start, let us start with an opening prayer. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Copeless and I'm from the Seventh-day Adventist Spanish Bethel Church and today I'm going to do the prayer for you guys in Spanish. At this moment I'm going to ask you guys to bow down so that we can do the prayer and ask God for His presence during this time. Let's pray. Eh, Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santifica sea tu nombre Dios. En este momento te queremos agradecer por tu amor Señor, eh, por tu misericordia y te imploramos eh, perdón por nuestros pecados, Padre, límpianos de todo mal y ayúdenos, Señor, en este momento poder recibir tu presencia, comenzar este mensaje, Padre, bendice el programa que tenemos preparado para hoy, Dios, y te pedimos por tu Santo Espíritu para que nos puede guiar al entender, Señor, lo que usted tiene para nosotros en este momento. Gracias, Señor, y en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. All right. So I don't know about you, but okay. ever since I was little and I was reading <laughs> stories in storybooks, yeah. I always wondered what it would be like to be another character. Yes. To be another person, to have another yeah, game, yeah, yeah, another yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, I think my little sisters now are probably going through that, like, yeah. same mentality. Yeah. So I want you guys to bring back that childhood memory and play that out with me, but with Bible characters. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do it. So. If you could be someone else, if you could go back in time, back into the biblical days, choose another name, hmm. and maybe reflect on different choices you might have made for that character, who would you choose? You know, as you guys are taking the time to think about that character, I think the person that I would choose would either have to be David or Paul. Okay. But Paul, I would have to be bold enough to like be Paul. Bold <laughs> and same with Paul. David, same with David, because going up against a lion bear and not mentioning Goliath, I mean, oh, that <laughs> also takes a lot of like, you know, courage. Yes. But I think those are the names that I would pick. Who would you pick? Okay, so for those of you who remember camp meeting a few years back, uh, I spoke about Rahab, and yes. Rahab is still my top choice. Yes, I okay. I would love to live out Rahab's experience and yeah. really experience firsthand what it's like to say yes to God yeah. in really difficult times. For sure, for sure. Well, I hope you guys have put in your answers on the comments down below. Um, but today, without further ado, I have the amazing privilege of introducing our speaker for this evening. Danelia Frey is entering her second year of studies at Berman University in Lacombe, Alberta. She is studying secondary education with a major in social studies and a minor in mathematics. Danelia has a passion for creating space that encourages others to be their best selves through open conversations. She enjoys playing board games, baking, and long conversations with people, and one day she hopes to become a life-changing educator and author. 
Danelia, thank you so much for blessing us with your talents and the gifts that God has provided with you. I hope that you guys enjoy the service. May God be with you. think God can't use you? Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David had an affair and was a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. The Samaritan woman was divorced. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. 
Timothy had an ulcer. Lazarus was dead. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 26-29 What does connecting like Jesus mean to you? When I think about connecting like Jesus, I think it means not being quick to judge people and trying to reach people where they are and loving them just as Jesus would, because if Jesus is able to use me, then he'll be able to use them too. Connecting like Jesus is about connecting through music for me. Connecting like Jesus is loving the underdogs and the outcasts just the way they are. I encourage you throughout this week, throughout this camp meeting, to learn and reflect about what it means to connect with Jesus and connect like Jesus. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again tonight. Please join us in praise and worship to God. Amen.
Because you've been faithful to me, amen. Join with us as we sing this song, acknowledging who God is and how faithful he's been to us, amen. call you holy your name is holy you are so holy to me hallelujah i call you holy your name is holy holy you are and holy you'll be hallelujah hallelujah just say i call you holy are you holy? Say your name. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Oh, say I call. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Say holy you are and holy. Faithful, you are so faithful to me. Say, I call you faithful. You
Jesus at the center of it all. Oh, Jesus, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Saint Jesus, Saint Jesus. And even if not, I pray that you are able to receive a blessing. I pray that you are able to feel uplifted and filled as this presentation, as the service continues throughout this day, throughout this evening, and throughout the rest of the weekend. My name is Denadia Frey. I am going into my second year at Berman University and I am studying secondary education with a major in social studies and a minor in math. But honestly, aside from that, the only thing that matters, the only thing that makes me anybody is the simple yet powerful fact that I am a child of God. I am a servant of God and that is the main part of my identity. I ask that you take the time to pray with me. Father God, we are so thankful for the opportunity that we have to rededicate our lives to you. Life gets hard, things get tough, but we are so thankful that no matter what, you remain the same as we go into the word, as we go into this book to learn more about you, I pray that you show us things that we've never seen before. And I want to ask all of these things in the worthy name of your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you and I are so closely connected that I don't know where I end and where you begin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I'm going to ask that you have your Bibles open with me. That is one of the most important things. It is important that we are active participants of any worship program, any worship service. So, if you need to pause and go and get your Bible, get a notebook, um, get some pens, get some highlighters, a computer, whatever it is, I want to make sure that you are going in this with me. So, get your Bibles open. Um, we will be looking at the Gospel of Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is the second of the Gospels. And we'll be looking at Mark chapter 4, and we'll be starting at verse 3. So again, that is Mark chapter 4, verse 3, and I'll be reading in your hearing from the um, English Standard Version, from the English Standard Version. And it reads, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path and the birds came and devoured it. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and it immediately sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain growing up and increasing and yielding 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. This may be a story that we've all heard many times. We've possibly heard it preached, we've possibly heard it in Bible study and Sabbath school, but I really want us to dive into this. There are three main parts of this that I want us to understand. Let's look at that first part of the seed. So there is a sower who is throwing seeds around. He doesn't have a specific aim, he's just allowing the seeds to just go wherever they please. And it says, some seeds fell along the path and the bird came to devour it, a path. What is a path? A path is a place that we walk. It is where um, we get through little rocky terrains, we get through forests. That is what a path is. A sidewalk is also an example of a path. But what it really is, is it's a place where there was once growth where there was once fertile soil that has now become a place where people just walk, wander, take advantage of it, and just go over it. 
if we think about our roads they used to be lush ground beautiful ground that you could plan such amazing things but once day somebody came in and said no we are going to pave this we are going to put concrete over it and it's going to be a place that we walk now, why do I say all of this? There are many of us who have uh, had situations in our lives that have turned us into footpaths. We were once so bright, we were once so joyful and so happy, but somebody said something wrong to us. Somebody hurt us, somebody questioned us, somebody abused us, and we have become this footpath and we've actually said to God, you know what? You can handle every other aspect of my life except my footpath because this is where other people have taken control of my life this is where other people have started to use me over and over and over again that i don't even recognize myself those listening they might be parents they might be adults but i'm really speaking to the teens right now there are a lot of things that you are going through there's a lot of things that i am going through that people won't understand there are areas in our lives where we have become a footpath and we've said you know what this is just an area that god cannot touch this is an area that God cannot heal because the damage has already been done. People have already been walking over it and I'm just tired of it. I'm just sick and tired. But God is saying to you that no matter where your footpath is, no matter where people have walked all over you, he can still come to you. But in this case, when the seeds fell in that spot, they couldn't grow. It couldn't grow because people were using it as a path, as a footpath. What areas in your life have become a footpath? What areas in your life have become a place where you have neglected yourself and who you once were? Why is it important for us to recognize these things? Because wherever our footpaths are, are areas that we are not able to grow. For me, I'll be very honest with you right now, for me, it's my confidence. It's an area where people have questioned, where people have given me names that I didn't want attached to me, where people have said things about me that were not true, where people have placed me in situations that I was not in, and that, that path where people have walked all over me, that section of my life was my confidence. And I said to God, for 10 years, you can't handle this. You can't touch this. This is just a part of my identity. This is just a part of who I am, but it's not. Don't allow the things that people have done to you to allow you to block off a specific part of your life because God is not afraid. He's not afraid to get into those dirty places. He's not afraid to get into those little corners of your life or those areas where you try to keep isolated or under the sheets. God is saying, I am ready to go there. Next. The next part in this says, As he sowed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. Immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. So we see here that the seeds did grow. They grew quick. They grew fast. They grew faster than any of the other ones. But the problem was, yes, there was soil. Yes, the soil was good. But right under that soil was rocks. There was no depth. There wasn't enough depth. There wasn't enough depth for it to establish its roots, to be able to produce around it, to be able to spread the gospel, to be able to evangelize. Some of us have areas in our lives where we look okay on the outside. We come to church, we go to school, we go to meetings, we go to house events, we go to family events, and we say, yeah, I'm good. But behind this layer of good, behind this layer of good soil, of this smile, of this happiness, there are rocks that are allowing me and not allowing me to grow. They're not allowing me to spread my roots far and wide. All that's happening is people are saying things, it's hitting me, it's getting the nutrients and then it springs up. What happens when things grow too early? What happens when things are not given enough time to grow on the inside before showing on the outside? For many of us, God is putting us in a place of hiding, but we want to be planted. We want seeds in those shallow, dirt, rocky ground areas so people can see everything that we've done, everything that we are doing quickly. When God is saying, no, you just need to stay in your soil because there you can establish roots that will impact your friends, your family, and generations to come. Next. After they sowed, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path and the birds came and devoured it. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil and immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and since it had no root, it withered away. 
Other seeds fell among thorns, and those thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Some of the seeds were on a path, your footpath, that area of your life that you've said, God, you cannot handle this. Some of them have um, dropped on places where there's shallow ground, but there's so much rock, and we're kind of happy because everyone gets to see all that we're doing, but we're also sad because we haven't put things in place for future generations. But then there are the seeds that just fell in bad places. Seeds that fell in places where there were bad people, bad soil, there wasn't enough nutrients coming, there wasn't sun, there wasn't water. And many of us have been placed in places where we feel like we are surrounded by thorns. We are surrounded by people who don't care about us. We are surrounded by people who don't hear us, who don't see us and who don't love us. And they are choking us up. But I wanna give you a little bit of hope. It finally says, and other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. God has placed a seed in us. We are not the seed necessarily, because a seed can't move itself. An actual seed cannot move itself, but you can. You can look at your environment and figure out, hey, Am I planting myself? Am I closing off parts from God because it's become a footpath? Am I tired? Am I planting myself in shallow soil where there's so many rocks? Am I planting myself where there are thorns? Or am I planting myself in good soil where God can shine down on me, where rain can come down? And yes, sometimes the days are hard, but it allows us to grow. Some of your teens are going through things that your parents don't know about, your friends don't know about. And as cliche as this sounds, everything you need is in this book. Everything you need is in this book. No, this is not a textbook. No, it's not a textbook for life. This is a biography. Many times when things are going on in our lives, we look to this to find ourselves. No, it is time that we look to this book to find God. He will put us in good soil. And even if we aren't in good so soil, even if we are born into situations, born into places where there are thorns stifling us, there are things trying to scorch us, God will say, I shall move you. I will move you to better soil so that you can grow. Not just for yourself, but this one seed will grow into 30-fold, into 60-fold, into 100-fold. Think about a small apple seed. When that seed is planted, what happens? A tree grows. When that tree grows, a nice apple forms more apples. Let's say we get 100 apples. Let's say each apple has four seeds. That is 400 seeds just from that one seed being planted in good soil. Ask God to show you something. Ask God to show up in your life in a way that he never has before. I pray that this story, even though we weren't able to really, really, really dive into it, I pray that the surface of this story can encourage you to just ask God to be moved to good seed. But when you ask to be moved and he's ready, he is sending you somewhere, he is telling you to cut off that friend, he is telling you to cut off that mindset, it is up to you to have obedient faith. So I ask right now that you pray with me. Not just that I can pray for you, but that I can pray for myself and we can go through this together. Let's pray. God, you are amazing. You are magnificent. You are just all-knowing, all-powerful, and just beautiful. But sometimes we feel that we have been planted in such hard environments that we cannot grow. And God, I ask that you show your children what you have planned for their lives. I ask that you show them how to be in good soil, how to create good soil. Maybe they were born into a family or a place where there are thorns, where there is shallow soil, where there are rocks, where there is a footpath. But God, I ask that as you intervene in their life, that you allow them to create good soil for everyone coming after them. No matter how much it rains, I pray that you show them how you have planned for them to grow.
We say that youth are the leaders of tomorrow, but no, they are the leaders of today. They are the ones in our church who are going to make a movement, who are making a movement. Work on your children right now. Work on every soul, every person who is under the sound of my voice. I pray that you show up in their lives in a way that you never have. Move them yourself. If they are struggling to move, if they are struggling to have faith and obey you, move them yourself so they can create things for others, so they can evangelize and so they can be the sermon and be your children. God, be with your children. We are living in some very untrying, uncertain times, but I ask that you show up. Just show up in our lives and take over. I want to ask all of these things in the worthy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you are able to dive into this part of the Bible so much more. And if you ever need some encouragement, if you ever need a prayer, if you even need a Bible study, if you want to learn how to get into the word, please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out. You are not alone in this. Sometimes the Bible seems boring. Sometimes church seems boring, but you are not alone. I pray that you are blessed. Happy Thursday, have a great evening, and enjoy the upcoming weekend on all of the amazing programs that will be at your disposal. Bye. At the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus 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 at the center of it all. Sing Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to From beginning to the end. Oh, it will always be. It's always been you, Jesus. Jesus and nothing else matters. You're the center Everything revolves around you Jesus, you Jesus at the center of my life Jesus be, Jesus be the center of my life From beginning to the end Hallelujah. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do.
Jesus at the center of it all. Oh, Jesus, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Saint Jesus, Jesus, Saint Jesus. Saint Jesus, Jesus, cry out, say, Jesus, Jesus, one more time, say, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you all join me in giving Denelia a virtual round of applause? Because that was amazing yes, and yes. worthy of praise. Oh, yes, God. it really it was. was. Praise tonight. Yes, I mean Danelia. I have known her for quite a bit now, and she's yes. always been an amazing speaker. She amazes me. I have to tell you all watching from home that her baking is spectacular, but her speaking tonight, <laughs> it, it takes the cake. It takes the cake. Oh man. Well, uh, tomorrow we are going to be having another day full of services just for you. At 6 p.m., we're going to continue our monthly Friday night live, but this one is super special. Berman University is going to be with us for our Friday night live starting at 6 p.m. And at 7 p.m., please make sure you join us for another worship service with our guest speaker, Josh, from all the way up north. He'll tell you more about himself during his sermon. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And don't forget to tag us, hashtag uh, camp meeting, um, and also hashtag connecting like Jesus 2021 on your Instagram so that we can also post on our stories. Thank you so much and God bless you.